Hello, y'all. How y'all doing? Y'all thought I wasn't going to go live this week? I thought I wasn't going to go live this week, too. <laughs> well, I realized that on yesterday, um, actually, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, I got the notice that we were going to see um, Eric Thomas in person. Um, if you were VIP, if you were a sponsor, if you were a <clears throat> person that's being voted or a company that's being voted into your board awards, then you could attend last night. And so I had such a good, good time. Like it was really nice to see Eric Thomas live. It, was, it really empowered me and it really gave me a lot of energy and it gave me a lot of confirmation and it made me not feel alone for some of the stuff I always tell you guys. And I was like, okay, so this is me just thinking this is totally, you know, something that's validated in Eric Thomas's work. So because of that, I decided that I will go live tonight. I don't know where you guys are. So definitely put in the chat where you are. But for me, I'm in Charleston and surprisingly it's cold. <laughs> and so they're saying that we have, so we have some, it's raining it just a little bit. Um, and then they're saying it's going to become ice. So since we have so many bridges, then the plan is to everyone stay in the house and not really go anywhere and be safe. And so I figured, well, if we in the house, I may as well be safe and tell y'all some tips. Cause I'm going to tell you guys, I've had so many clients, um, in the past couple of weeks or people that reach out to me in my DMS and LinkedIn or IG, and everybody is kind of on the same thing. Thing. Not only do they want to start their career in HR, which is great, but the biggest thing is that folks are like, you know, how do I get interviews? Like, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I'm going to tell y'all uh, two big tips because you really only need two. You really only need two big tips. And, and, and it comes out easy, but the work behind it is hard. So the biggest thing I want you guys to know is that you only need two tips I'm going to give you tonight to gland these interviews. Once you get an interview, like, it's on you to get the job. Show your personality, show your skills, all that stuff. You guys can interview. You're just having a hard time getting the folks to call you for one. So I'm going to tell you how we're going to do it. But I see Big D is in the chat tonight. Big D, we haven't seen you in a while. I have not seen you. How you doing? I haven't seen you really on LinkedIn. Um, and I haven't really, I haven't seen you in the chat in a while. So it's so nice to have you tonight. Um, how you doing? All cleared up from your leave and all of this good stuff. Because I know you were like on medical leave, I believe. But I am so happy to see you here. You've been hiding. No, don't hide. Don't hide. <laughs> I don't blame you, though. This is a season for hiding, a season, in my opinion, not just for hiding, but for, you know, kind of changing your mindset, learning more of yourself, um, perfecting yourself. And so I did that um, in 2020, and I'm going to keep doing it until I feel like I'm comfortable because I feel like I always can learn. I always can make myself better. Um, you great. Good. Good, good, good. I'm happy to see you doing good. Hey, Sam. My cousin Sam is in the building. Yes. Sam, are you going to the board Awards tomorrow night as well? I, I can't wait to go. I think we're going to have a blast. Seeing Eric Thomas in person last night was so, so motivating. So happy. Like, I'm so happy I was able to attend. And so I, um, I'm excited to go tomorrow night. He like answered one-on-one -on -one questions. He, you know, I love the fact that when you ask a question, he doesn't give it short form. Like he gives you multiple life examples to validate his answers. So that was awesome. No, darn Sam. I can't believe you're not going. Well, I think Misha is going and I want to say that Shawana's going. So I hope to see them there. But I want to tell you guys how we can land these interviews. Y'all want to talk about how to get these interviews? Like, you know, you keep applying and you keep getting like 50 million emails on you're not a fit. You're not a fit. Well, I'm going to tell y'all how to make sure you a fit. And y'all know me. I mean, it's Thursday. So, I mean, it, normally on Thursday we do happy hour, but it's Friday. So it's really the time for happy hour, right? Like, this is really, really the time for happy hour. Um. Darn it, Sam. I'm so sorry you're going to miss it. I am, I'm surprised I'm going, honestly. Um, my cousin Donnie on my, my granddaddy's side, because Sam's my cousin on my grandmama's side. Um, my cousin Donnie talked me into going. I'm so happy he talked me into going because just being in the room with Eric Thomas last night and the things he had to say and the people, the engagement that he got from people and the way that people were truly just listening, like, that was mind blowing. So I can only imagine what it'll be like tomorrow night. Hey, DJ, how are you? 
Hey, 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 DJ, DJ, didn't you come late the last time? Look, you on time. We got to do it on Friday night so you can be on time because they have those meetings on Thursday messing you up, right? Y'all, I am, I'm drinking this damn Stella Rosa. I can't even make this exciting. Everybody talking about Stella Rose, Stella Rose, Stella Rosa, whatever. And somebody gave me a bottle. I think my sister gave me a bottle. I ain't feeling it, but I'm gonna finish drinking it because I'm about to waste, you know, waste a good drink. <laughs> so I'm gonna finish this bottle off. That's what I had the last time <clears throat> that we were live. And um, it's just not my favorite. I don't like like the bubbly in it. I like it to just, you know, I like it to be smooth. I like it to be blended. Like it's too bubbly, like, like, I don't know. I don't like it. You just got out of class. What what are you going to school for? And and let's be clear, DJ, you might be on a couple minutes late, but I won't tell y'all what we're going to talk about because we're talking about how y'all can get interviews. Like when I say interviews, like you apply and you get a call back, you get an email, you get scheduled, you get seen, you get to showcase your skills, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to tell y'all because I've been really getting frustrated. Matter of fact, while DJ answering that, I've been frustrated. I've been, I don't think people know that to get interviews takes more than just applying. It's sad to say, particularly now, if you just want a job where you about to just, you know, work in the gas station on the corner, it might not be so hard, right? You can apply, get an interview the same day, start the same day, start the next day, right? But if you want a job where you are building your career and growing, that makes things a little bit different. So DJ O, DJ is going for business administration with a concentration in HR management. Awesome. That's my master's degree. I have an MBA and HR management. I have an HR management degree and an HR leadership degree. But I don't tell people I got three masters. I feel like people be like, man, damn, Tamika, why are you in the school so long? I'd be wondering too. But I enjoyed every bit of it. Um, when I started getting my MBA, I took HR classes and fell in love with them. So then when I was done getting the MBA and the HR management master's degree, I only had needed like maybe three courses, I think, to finish getting an HR leadership master's degree. So I actually have three master's degrees. So that I'm so happy for you because I feel like HR and business management goes hand in hand. So much for my business degree, I use an HR. Like, I can't say I use it, but it helps me understand stuff. Like, it helps me get a good grip on what's going on and, like, how why the business is operating the way it's operating, when they make changes and, and why it's necessary for HR. So I like it. But let me tell you guys, if y'all want to hear about how to get these interviews, then y'all know me. Go ahead and put a three in the chat. Not a one, not a two, a three. Put a three in the chat if y'all want to hear how to get these interviews. If y'all don't put no three in the chat, then I guess we can just chat. <laughs> like, just talk about anything. But that's what was on my mind today because it was just in my spirit to let y'all know. All right, DJ, I appreciate your three. I don't know what happened to Big D. Come on, Sam. All right, all right, good, good, good. So y'all want to hear. And anybody else who's on here, y'all know, I don't know you're on here if you don't put something in the chat. So you put something in the chat, I'm going to say, what's up, you know? All right, good. So the best way to guarantee yourself an interview. Now, this is aside from your networking, because honestly, I feel like networking is super duper powerful and can guarantee some interviews, right? I've had a shitload of interviews from networking. Now, networking is probably your force for sure way, like your number one way, not only just to get an interview, but to get the details, like how much are they offering on a job, what's the culture like, da, 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 like stuff you want to ask your home girl, networking will get you there. But if you're like, what's well, Mika, I'm building up my network. I ain't got it there yet. How do I get these interviews? You got to have a resume that catches the recruiter's eyes. Y'all have seen me do, I've done like two different videos on resumes. So I did one video that tells you guys how to, matter of fact, I did three videos. It was early on in my channel. So if you're watching the replay, I'm going to put it right here. But early on in my channel, out of my first like 20 videos, three of them were on resumes. And that was on purpose because that's how you're going to get yourself an interview. That's how you're going to get the job. You can't get a job till you get an interview. You can't get, you know, you can't get an interview till you got a master resume. And when I say resume, like you need to make sure that recruiters pause on it. So let me tell you about them three videos I did already. The three videos I did, I did one on like things to look for in a resume. 
I did another one that tells you how to create a resume, like from a template. So you don't have to sit there and like type it out and then it looks rough because it has no color, it has no design, it has no format. You can get a resume template and format. So I went in and told y'all that. Then I did another video to tell you how to edit an existing resume. So I did three different videos on resumes. And I guess I didn't get the tip out there. I didn't get it out there to y'all enough to let y'all know. That's your way you're going to get this job. I don't care what job it is. If it's getting your foot wet and getting started in HR, or even if it is elevating your career, because now you're already starting in HR, but you want to you wanna build up to a higher position in HR, the best way to do that is to have an amazing resume. What you want, I don't care what you've been doing before, but what you want to do is make that recruiter stop. You're going to make them stop because you're going to have the skills. So if you have the skills showing in your resume, you're good. You're like, Tamika, I never work in HR, though. How can I have the skills if I didn't? You're going to use transferable skills. So stop putting these summaries where y'all telling me all about what you've done at your last company and what you're really good at with that company. Because if it's not related to HR, then all I see is what you know. And I don't see where you can be. You got to tell me where you can be. And if you have been working in something else and you want to be in HR, you want to be in whatever career field, you want to do a career pivot, then I need to see nothing but that career there. And you know what? I want you to shock me because I want to see that your summary and your skills relate to this position. Then I look down at your professional experience and I'm like, whoa, <clears throat> but they've never worked in this thing before. I can't help but set the stop and pause. I don't know if you guys know it, but I said this a thousand times. I actually watched a presentation from a talent acquisition specialist of, he's worked for MasterCard, he's worked for Google, he's also worked for Facebook, right? And he currently works for Facebook. He said that, same thing I said, I said it takes five to seven seconds. He said it takes seven to 10 seconds. Regardless, on average, recruiters are only going to look at resumes for less than a minute on average. And the only reason I feel like that average is so high is because there's some people that literally make us stop and look at their resume. So yeah, I want it to look nice. Give me something different than a traditional format. Don't just type it out there and let me read these long sentences. I need something bold. I need something in ita italicized. Even if you don't give me color, make it stand out. The things I want you to make stand out is if you've worked for a big name company or a company that's national or a company that has a ton of employees and you want to make sure that that's probably bold. If that's not the case and you work for smaller companies, then what you want to do is make your job title bold. Because what you want to do is make me as a recruiter hone in on where you've been, what you did. That's what you want to do. Make me stop. Because I'm going through hundreds of applications. So I'm clicking quick. If I don't see something, I'm a quick click. Do a quick scan. Bam. Okay, next one. Bam. Next one. Now, you do have these fancy applicant tracking systems. <clears throat> People are like, well, what is that? Everybody talk about the ATSs, the applicant tracking systems. What that is is when you go to a company's website, and it says apply here or careers page or whatever, you're going to click on apply and fill in your application. When you fill in that digital application, it feeds over into the applicant tracking system. It's literally building your, your employee profile so we can have all of your information there. Then you upload that resume. All of that is the applicant tracking system. The app, so many companies get like so many applications that they, they can customize the applicant tracking system to say, I want you to either one only pull the resumes that have these words in it. They pull in them words from the job description. You'd be like, Tamika, I don't know which words the applicant tracking system is going to pull. They're pulling words from the job posting that you're seeing, the job description. That's where they're pulling the words from. So you pull the words from there. If you've done some experience somewhere that, that equates to what's in that job description, literally copy and paste that line and put it in your resume. Cool? Another thing is once you get into the applicant tracking system, some applicant tracking systems, you can set up where the system grades you. Some applicant tracking systems, you can set it up where you tell it, kick out these people if they answer this question wrong. They call those knockout questions. Some applicant tracking systems are set up where you will automatically go in and say you can grade them yourself. If you're looking for a super big company, a global company, a national company, a company that has thousands of employees, which means they're getting hundreds of applications per position, then guess what? They're probably going to have that system set up to grade you and possibly to knock you out. So most people only knock out if it's like an absolute, you got to know this, you got to do this, da, da, da. 
that's the only time you're really going to see knockout questions. And how you know you receive the knockout questions, you'll get an email back pretty quick. So it's normally within one and three days. You can set up how many days I want to send this rejection email. Most companies do one and three days that they tell you. Because some people won't tell you immediately. Some people are like, well, I'm going to make them think I looked at it for a little bit. So you might get it three days later. Next thing is once the applicant tracking system picks you up and you're graded, then it can grade you like by stars. Some companies do stars or some applicant tracking systems do stars. Some applicant tracking systems do colors. And we can go in and say, I want to see all my green people, or all my five star people, or all of my people with this, with this little, um, however the system is grading it. And then we go through those applications first because the system has already told us that these people fit the job, right? I ain't got to look through these people that don't really have the skills. I can hone in on these people that already have the skills. Now, it's been plenty of times that I use that and then I'm like, I don't see the skills. It's because people have really shown those words. Like, I'm like, you ain't never did this job before. How, how are you a dark green? Or how are you a green at all? Or how did you become an orange? Was well, because they have actually put in the words that the applicant tracking system catches. So let me see what y'all got going on in this chat real quick. And then I'm going to get back in my zone. Y'all see I'm in a zone? <laughs> I've been going, honey. Uh, I was in work mode, I guess. I can't tell you how many times I told people, you need to have a resume. That's more important. Yep. More meat and less fat. Mm -hmm. Yes. And don't. And I don't want to see three to five pages. Oh, ho, 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 ho. two pages or less. Thank you, Big D. Thank you. You know, what? I need to look at my phone because I do have some more pointers I can give you guys. Three, and I saved these pointers because I was actually going to do an updated video. And I still will do an updated video to make it a little bit more clean. But yes, y'all, don't go over two pages. I don't care if you're at executive level and you've been killing it. No more than two pages. And you know, I wonder about pictures. If you're applying to U.S. roles, then I wouldn't do a picture because there are protected laws against, you know, EEO rights. So I may not want them to know that I'm a black female that, you know, and I may not want them to know, like, if I have a head wrap on that this is my religion or I may not want them to, you know, see me to identify me in some type of way that's protected by the EEO, um, and equal employment opportunity, right? So I may not want to hold that stuff off. So that's one way not to do it. But in the times of digital times, and if you're really looking to make some money, then it's fine to do that picture because so many other countries, like applicants in other countries, they put their pictures. And to be honest with you, y'all should have a LinkedIn profile with that link on your resume. And that's going to show your picture too. So I wouldn't even waste time with a picture myself because it just takes up space. And and I agree. Um, someone said that and I totally, totally agree. So definitely do two pages or less. Don't do no more than two pages. Um, another thing that you want to make sure you do is... Don't get terrified of gaps in your resume. If you're like, well, Tamika, I wasn't working for a period of time, especially with COVID now. Um, don't feel bad for those gaps. Just go ahead and list out your work. Don't worry about putting a, the exact date you started. Like I started June 25th, 2020. No, no, no. Just put 2020. You don't even need to put June. Just put the year. You know, if the company requires a month, then put it in there. You know, some applications require that. If it doesn't, don't worry about that. And the biggest thing you want to do is you want to catch their attention on your skills. I just told a, a, a person that interviewed, oh, I think that was this morning. Um, she had a gap in her resume and she put in that gap, you know, that uh, something to the effect of, you know, stayed home to raise my family type thing. And in um, and our company, I really love it because we promote that type of thing. Like we, we really go after folks that have been out of the workforce for a while. We really go after diverse candidates. We give referral bonuses for those type of candidates, that type of thing. Um, and, and she wasn't referred, well, she was referred, but she didn't put the name on the application, but, and it didn't come to me that way. I just looked at her skills and looked at her resume. And I told her, I appreciated that. And I was telling her that, you know, I'm, I'm proud of her for putting that in there because just because you weren't working for a while, that doesn't mean you didn't learn. You don't still know how to do the job. It's just like riding a bike, right? If you ride a bike, you know, when you were little and maybe I ride one in 10, 15 years, I still know how to ride a bike, right? So like people get all worked up about like, oh, I don't want them to see a gap. Nah, don't worry about that gap. That gap ain't bothering the soul. Go ahead and put in your skills because we're looking at a skill set. We're looking at a skill set. Um, Pictures are automatic disqualifiers for me. I actually have been told, have told candidates to resubmit your resume without a picture. Well, Big D, you work, you do U.S. roles, right? You like um, all of your candidates and your employees there in the U.S. 
because I used to be that way. I used to be that way. Honestly, my mindset literally just changed in the last two months since now that I'm working for a global company. Um, they're just not protected with those laws. And so it's, oh, when you start doing global work, like, here, I got a damn picture. I mean, my folks, my applicants who apply in India, my applicants who apply in UK, um, I even get applicants in countries that we don't operate in, like Africa, um, Turkey, um, you know, like all over, and Ukraine, Ukraine um, they all have pictures. And it actually helps me. So I don't mind pictures now that I'm in the global space because I'm not accustomed to their names, just like they're not accustomed to Tamika. Every time I get on a call with someone in India, every time I get on a call with someone in UK, they say, hi, Tamika. Mm -mm. I don't say a thing because it doesn't bother me. Like, it just doesn't bother me. Um, but they that's the way that they pronounce letters. And the way that they use letters is different. So the names, when I get a picture, it really helps me remember who I spoke with. So I don't mind the pictures for them. Um, I mean, at least it, it helps me until I get to that, to that interview or that screening. Once I knock that out, then obviously your personality makes me remember you or your skills or what have you. Um, your interview overall, but yes. Okay. So you're, you're in the U S so in, in the U S is different big D because when you start doing global, like everybody got pictures, honey. Everybody got pictures. <laughs> they don't have a picture. It looks weird. And everybody ties back to their LinkedIn page. So y'all make sure y'all have LinkedIn pages. Cause I'm in LinkedIn all day. Um, I feel like DJ and I talk through LinkedIn, but quite a few people, um, I, I, I have quite a few people that reach out to me on LinkedIn like on a regular basis, which is absolutely fine. And I reply right back because I'm literally in it, like talking to my candidates, talking to the folks I've just offered a job to until they get into our system where we can Slack them because we use Slack. Then I prefer that they just send me a quick LinkedIn message if they just got a quick question or something like that because you get so many emails, it's just quicker to send me a LinkedIn message. Um, And you receive, yeah, yeah, foreign resumes, they all got pictures, honey. But the pictures really help me because the names are so different and unique to me. Um, I took Spanish in school and, and I, I don't, I'm not recruiting for any Spain positions, but I took Spanish in school. And the craziest thing about that is like, I want to think that because they have an A on the end of their name, they are female. That's just not the case, honey. <laughs> That's not a case. And I want to think because they have a, a O on their name, then they're a male because I took Spanish. Now I got to rewire my mind because I'm like, oh, I get it. <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> so it works out. Um, what skills should you concentrate on if you are new in HR? You mean like for your resume, Denise? Hello, Denise. How are you? I haven't, I don't remember your name. You've probably been here before. If you have been here before, then hey girl, hey. But if you are new to it, then welcome to Happy Hour with Hey HR. So uh, help me with this question, Denise. You, when you say, what skills should I concentrate on if you are new in HR? Are you telling me that what skills you should concentrate on to get into HR? What skills you should concentrate on on your resume? Or what skills should you try to concentrate on because you just started your job in HR and now, you know, you want to perform well? Like, help me understand where we're going because otherwise I'm going to answer all. Um, <laughs> let's see, DJ, what's going on? If you are changing careers, what should I learn as far as like computer skills and programs? Honey, all you need to learn is what you know. Make sure you know Google. You know, every company use different things, right? Every company use a different type of way to communicate that type of thing. What you want to show is whatever software or computer skills you already have. Because most times, a lot of times, because there's so many options, I don't expect everyone to know Zoom. I don't expect everyone to know Google Meet. I don't expect everyone to know Microsoft Teams. I just don't because I'm not really looking. It's just so many options, right? It's just like here. Girl, where you get your hair from? Well, I mean, it kind of don't matter where I get my hair from because so many people are, are, are selling really good hair, right? So it's the same way for computer skills. I just want to see that you have a tech acumen. I want to see that you can learn a software, right? I want to see that you can learn how to work in the digital space. So just put put a put a Marriott of everything you worked on. And that's what I always do. I list, as I continue to grow my career, I list every single software I've worked on. So I'll list something like if I work with Zoom, obviously I have Zoom on there. I have Google Meet. I have WebEx. I have... Um, uh, what's the other one? Zoom, Google Meet, WebEx. 
But anyhow, I have all of those, right? Every applicant tracking system I worked on, I have those. So the primary applicant tracking systems I work with is Jobvite. And then every HRS I worked on, I put those. So I've worked with Paycom. I've worked with Paychex. I've worked with um, ADP. I have worked with a ton of them. Every time I work on them, I just keep putting them on it. And what that's going to show is that not only do I know how to use these systems, but I can easily learn your system. That's what you want to show. I've done it for all of these organizations, so it's easy for me to learn your system. So that's something you want to put on there. You obviously want to put on every branch of Microsoft that you've worked on. So Microsoft Suite, if, and you know, just put like Microsoft Suite and then parentheses, put like Word, PowerPoint, whichever ones you're comfortable with, Excel, what have you. Um, if you worked in a Google Space and a Google Drive, then you probably want to put like Google Drive, you want to put Google Meet, um, you want to put Google Docs, you want to put you know, Google Analytics, if you work with Google Analytics, you know, you want to put wherever you have your skills because you just don't know what they have. Unless they have it in a job posting or a job application or the job description, you don't know what software they're using. And even if they have it in there and you've never worked on it, then guess what? You're going to show them by listing all that you've worked on that you can handle this. All righty. DJ, if you are changing careers, what should I do? Okay, we just talked about that. Awesome. Answer all. What happened? Did I answer all your? Oh, answer all her questions. <laughs> I got it. You trying to make me work tonight? I got you though. Um. So yeah, let's go back to her question. What skills should you concentrate on if you're new in HR? So if you're new in HR, like you're trying to get your career started in HR, and you just are trying to kind of get your skills up to par to get in the door. Um, it sounds crazy, but the absolute first thing you want to work on is networking. Because if you if you haven't started in, in HR, then you don't know what the HR conversations are like. So make sure that you connect with those people. If you can't connect with them in person, obviously COVID is out there rampant, then definitely get on LinkedIn. Look at their posts. See some of the things they're talking about. I would say highly, highly follow HR professionals, follow talent acquisition specialists. They're going to vent about their some of their headaches and stuff like that. So kind of get in the realm of hearing what the, what they're working with every day and what they're doing. Another thing is obviously, like I just talked about um, with DJ, make sure that you get comfortable with all of your, your software skills and show that you have a Marriott of those. Another thing would be good is to, you know, like get into HR groups so that you can kind of see what skills they're working on, what some of their headaches are. And I mean, I'm old school in HR. So back in the day, I literally just went to like the Department of Legal website. I went to um, like different federal web websites and learned. Like I, I people would be like, well, how'd you learn? Like, oh, you know, FMLA, FSLA, um, those type of things. Like I was in grad school. We went over it in employment law and we learned it. But to get comfortable with it, I went to their website and literally like read everything on that website. It's, Department of Labor website is so full of information that you'd be on it reading for these. So I did that. Um, and if you're just starting in your career, you just started your HR career, it depends on what position you're in. So if you start in as an HR assistant, you start in as an HR coordinator, you start in as an HR administrator, something entry level, then you want to make sure that you're working with all the counterparts in HR. They may say, hey, we hired you so that you can help recruiting. We hired you so that you can help benefits. We hired you so that you can help the generalists. What you want to do is make sure that you kind of help them all. Focus on whatever you were hired for. But you want to be able to help them all because that will help you not only learn that portion of HR, but it'll help you learn all of the other portions of HR and how they work together, how they work overlaps. So I would get comfortable, even if it's just, hey, you know, a, the generalist wants you to copy an employee file because the attorney needs it. Go on and copy that file. You're going to see what information she redacts from it. You're going to see who she notifies that she's sending it out. You're going to see how she covers that um, information to send it out to them, like what she may attach with it. Um, you may see how she's going to file that, how she's going to notate that, how she's going to keep track of that being there. So when you go and say, okay, I'm working with the benefits person, now you're going to see how are they communicating benefit changes to employees? How are they talking to the vendors? How are they um, working with their um, 
benefits broker or their account managers and what role each of them play in it. So that's good to obviously work with benefits to some degree, help them set up that benefits fair, help them get those um, open enrollment packets together, help them go through and strategize after everyone's elected their benefits to send the benefits out to the carrier, to make sure all the information is downloaded right in the system or to, um, you know, reconcile a bill or what have you. And so if you're working primarily with the recruiter, then you want to say, okay, and talent acquisition, I'm going to go help them set up for this job fair, even if it's, it's a, a, okay, it's a virtual one. So I'm going to help them put the lights up. I'm going to help them do this because I'm going to hear them talking to each other, some of the concerns they have. What are their last minute conversations before they go live? Um, what are some of the things that they need to prep for it? What are some of the things they're telling the candidates? So that's teaching you each part. So when you knew an HR, suck in as much information as you can because it'll tell you what part of HR you want to work in. All right. <laughs> got me in a zone better than I thought I'd be. I guess HR is my zone. So yes, since I have a gap in work history, I am trying to get into HR and it seems that I'm missing skills on my resume. Pick the skills up from the job description. Um, if you have, so what type of work did you do before Denise? I definitely follow you and have used your tips on my LinkedIn profile. Awesome. Yeah. You follow me on LinkedIn or you follow me on IG? I have to feel like I toss out all kind of stuff on IG. Like, y'all just got to be ready because a sister girl just be fluid with it on IG, especially if you get in my stories. Y'all LinkedIn, I keep it a little clean. You know what I'm saying? I try to keep it clean. You know, I try to keep it professional on LinkedIn. But um, IG, y'all be all in my life. <laughs> in the stories. I don't post as much as I should to trigger the algorithm. But I definitely be all in my stories telling y'all what's going on. And IG... Y'all see me cry because my baby went to college. Oh, I'm so happy for her. And she's so happy for herself. I'm so proud of her. Um, And just drop her off for Tuesday. Old girl talk about she coming home today. Ain't that so? <laughs> but she got to work this weekend. Um, And she didn't get here yet, so I guess she coming to the... You follow me on LinkedIn. Awesome. So I do post. I You know, I do a lot of reposting on LinkedIn. I need to post more. Um, My current job, you know, part of my job is to make sure that I put out as much information on LinkedIn as I can. So it gets a little busy for me on LinkedIn. So I want to repost some people's stuff. I want to create some of my own. I want to post about the jobs I need y'all to come on and apply for. And then I also need to, you know, like, I like, I like doing a little bit of everything there. Sometimes I just like hitting out reminders or comment on other people's stuff. But I, I'm enjoying LinkedIn. The more I build my network on LinkedIn, the more I find fun in it. Like I'm finding myself on the LinkedIn platform. It's, it's getting up there with my IG. Because the more connections I get, the more I'm like, oh, like some people are amazing on there. Um, am I hiring? I am hiring, Shawana. Are you ready to work in the tech space? Sam, you see Shawana get on here late? Talk about if I'm hiring. It's Shawana, let's talk because I sure got a lot of positions. <coughs> <coughs> Crazy thing though, know, Shawana, is majority of my positions. I would say majority of my positions are in India, but I just did, <clears throat> what, three India job offers, and I closed two of them, like, a couple weeks before. <clears throat> so I just closed, like, five India positions. I have about three or four, maybe five UK positions. But I do have some U.S. positions. I just closed one a day. I just did a job offer at 6 o'clock, um, and I think that closed that position. But I do have some some U.S. positions, too, 100% remote hunty. We all work remote at home. Denise, medical receptionist was previously. Now I'm in school, business administration, concentration and management. Awesome. So what you want to do is first you want to put your degree up there to the top, right? I don't care that you haven't finished it. Just put, you know, the year that you started it and put the date, the year that you anticipate completing, um, completing it because you don't really have that experience. So you want to focus them, get their minds ready. That, hey, I still got the skills. I'm still working on this thing. So you probably want to put some skills to the top. So whatever soft skills or, or hard skills or whatever you got, um, then you want to put those to the top. So if you want to do a skill set area, primarily like computer skills, because the world's so digital now, of like all the Microsoft suite, whatever, all the stuff we already talked about, you want to put those to the top, then you want to put your degree, and then you want to start your experience, right? Because you're showing them that I got tons of ambition. I can do this and get their mind ready when they don't see it there. Because by then, recruiters kind of already made up their mind if they're going to keep going or not. Um, and so then what you want to do is go ahead and put business administration, um, the receptionist position, a medical receptionist position. But you want to highlight the things that relate to HR. 
right? So if you're looking at job description, you're looking at an HR coordinator position and it says, be able to assist on various projects. Um, be able to keep track of the task and autonomy effectively. Be able to um, communicate with staff, internal, external, on a regular basis. You did all of that as a re medical receptionist. So you're just going to put that again. Look at that job description. If you're looking at HR coordinator, HRS assistant position, you're going to have some skills that you did as a medical receptionist. Put them on in your job description. That's going to let us know you are. Though you may have been a medical receptionist. You ready to be an HR professional. Cool. All right. Um, Make sure that with these resumes, before I look at the next question, y'all got to make sure that with these resumes, that y'all honing in. Like, I need y'all to really be on it. Like, don't play with it. I need y'all to um, research these job sites. You can research them in LinkedIn or Indeed. And make sure that you look at the company's career site. Are they telling you who was the employee of the year? Are they telling you about rewards and recognitions? Are they telling you who was their top performer? Are they telling you the company's goals and how they meet them? That's going to give you an idea of the culture, and that's going to tell you if you want to be there or not, right? Look at what type of positions they have open. Do they have a lot of HR positions on there? Only a few. Do they have a lot of positions, period? Like, you want to pay attention on that career site. Um, you can also... Don't forget that you can include like volunteer work or side hustles or your community work. Like you can include that stuff if it has skills that match the job you're looking for. Don't shy away from that stuff. When I was trying to get my foot wet in HR, I was a guardian of litem. I put that in there because that shows that I know how to stand before an audience because I had to go to court. I, that tells you I know how to handle difficult situations because I had to help parents get their kids back into the home when their kids got taken away from DSS. And I did all of that as volunteer work. Y'all want to put all of that in there. Um, the, oh, that's a big thing. Don't Y'all stop putting them damn references on y'all resume. That's a waste of space. Because first of all, most companies aren't looking for references, not companies who paying you well. Them little companies who trying to get all in your business, they want references. But big companies who want that skill set, who want it, they ain't looking at the references. Second of all, you do not want companies to reach out to your references unless they're actually offering you a job. So they should be having you sign a consumer authorization form before you give them a list of references. Don't be just giving out your rest references because now you're burning out your good references over a job that ain't even thinking about hiring you. So stop putting them references on there, okay? And if y'all have experience that doesn't relate to the job, so let's say, okay, my girl Ben, Denise was a medical receptionist and then she was, um, a server, and then she would have worked at Publix. She was a bagger, and then she had worked at Jimmy Jazz because so she was selling clothes in the mall. Only thing I really want to see from her, because medical receptions was her only related one, is only one job after that. Don't put all them other jobs. They don't relate. They don't relate. Don't put them on there. Oh, Lord, y'all going crazy. You know, you get Shawana in here, and she just thought with the laughing. Now she got Sam going. Um, wait, wait. Now I want some information on the positions. I got you, Sam. I got you, Sam. <laughs> it's the remote for me. It's the remote for me too, girl. Mm -hmm. I've been in the house all day. And it's the nice because the weather is not so good. Me too, Sam. Just told Sierra what she said. Yeah, tell Sierra, come on. Yeah. So we I work in a tech organization. Um and Sierra really, them young kids, like I had just the positions I just closed are all positions I never thought would even be a position. They ain't never been a job when I've been in school growing up. I hired a social media specialist. I hired an SEO manager. That's pretty much the words that help y'all find my YouTube channel. I hired a editorial content ops ahead of that. That's just writing all day and making sure that you just plan it right and your copy is good together and you get your copy and your editor together, that type of thing. These are positions I never even thought I'd hired for before. Um, so it's really crazy. Just be prepared because I am in the tech space. So I am in my company. And, and probably like so many other companies, y'all think, oh, I know Google because I go to that little task bar and I type something that, no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean that kind of Google. Are you comfortable with Google? Please don't tell me you know how to search because that ain't what I want to hear. What I want to hear is that you know how to, when you get to Google, where it says Google here, over the top right-hand corner are those little dots. And you know how to hit those little dots and get to the Google Drive, Google Meet, Google Docs. Google everything is there, right? 
So tell me you know how to get in there. Tell me you know how to launch off of Google Meet. That you know once I go to that calendar invite, I type in all the information. I tag that next person email that's going to create my link, that type of thing. So we kind of out there really in the Google space. Um, we work all 100% remote and we are global. So we we kind of work different time zones. You could, if you want, completely up to the position. Me, myself, I know that it's according to what positions I'm recruiting for at the time. So if I'm recruiting for India, I normally will start work like this morning. I start at six, but I normally will start like seven in the morning because it's evening time for my India folks. Um, it's afternoon for my UK folks. So if I'm doing US rules, I might start at eight o'clock. It don't matter. It don't matter when I jump on. Just all I got to do is get the job done. So y'all come on, look at our website. Good information. Thanks for the tips. You're welcome, Denise. Denise, was that enough? Did I like, did I take care of you, my friend? I want to make sure I did that. Objectives and references are a total waste of time. I swear it is. But you know what, though, Big D? I feel like objectives are not a waste of space if you're trying to either start your career or pivot your career. Because I feel like with the objective, now the summary is a waste of time. Don't get summarized what you did and all that. That's a waste of time. But I feel like objectives are huge because what I want, what I want you to know, I want to do a whole cover letter to tell you, hey, I want to start working in HR, but I can do a quick two-line objective to tell you I'm ready to start in HR. So I'm cool with the objective. The references take that shit off. Um, just like GPAs. Yeah, people still put GPAs. I don't know why. I don't see it as often as I used to. So I feel like people are walking away from that. But I've always been embarrassed of my undergrad GPA. Now, my grad GPA, I throw that out there all day. But long as sister was on the hustle bus with the undergrad, don't put them GPAs. Ain't nobody give it that either. Um, yeah, Sam, you got my number, girl. What do you have for someone who can just turn the computer on? <laughs> she want to get out the chat. <laughs> Don't laugh at her, Sam. You got this because me and you don't work in this kind of space before. Um, hi, my girl. Hey, hey, hi, my girl. Welcome. This is my first time I see you in the chat. I know because I don't remember my name like that. Okay, what's a good way to pivot from talent acquisition or recruiting to other functions. Oh, that's easy. You're already in there. You don't got started. Um, what you want to do is on your resume, you want to get away from all of those talent acquisition metrics and focus more on transferable skills. So like if you're going into a generalist role from being a talent acquisition specialist, then you want to say that have coordinated with um, the like whatever the generalist may have done, help them with those things. Or if you experience it in some type of way, so say, you know, experience and onboarding candidates, you, and you can may want to say how many you've onboarded. You probably want to focus on how, what, what type of organization you've done it for. So if you've done, if your talent acquisition has been in an area where you work with um, like, multiple HR offices, then you probably, instead of focusing on recruiting for multiple HR offices or multiple offices throughout whatever, then you want to say, um, conducted onboarding for X number of offices within this area, the state, this region, global, what have you, this number of countries. Um, you want to just get away from like how many candidates you went through. You want to get away from how many tools you use to find candidates. You want to get away from, um, how many candidates you bring on in, in X number of days. Like you're, you want to get away from attrition. You want to get away from those type of things, like, like things that take us into the talent world and focus your resume on things that shows, oh, she's been a talent, but she know about generalist work, right? Tell me if I answered that enough. Um, you new here. Hey, girl. Hey. Oh, good, Denise. I'm so happy this was helpful. Let's get back to Hummer Girl. Um, another thing with talent and recruiting is, you already got like a network of people. You should know some people um, in HR. If you don't, stop building that network because people can tell you what company is an easier transition to go into a specialist or a generalist role from talent. Please, I, I've been getting so many people for the last couple of weeks who are like, man, I'm a generalist. Or I'm a specialist, or I'm a not a generalist. I'll, I'll stay away from that. But they'll say, I'm a coordinator, or I'm a specialist, and I want to be the manager. The next thing I want to do is be an HR manager. You're setting yourself up for disaster. Don't do it. I don't suggest that to nobody because you're going to find yourself burning out. You're going to find yourself not liking your career because being going from an entry level position straight into a management role is a lot of information to absorb. So you want to be careful with that. Um, yeah, even if they give you the job, they're awesome, but nine times out of 10, they're going to pay you way less than you deserve because they can see you don't have the skills. And second, they're going to throw on you all kinds of stuff that probably don't even relate because they know you don't even know what the job should be. Second, if they put you into that role without you having skills, they probably 
don't have the resources to train you in that role as a manager. So just don't do it. There's too many signs. I would not ever do it. I don't ever suggest even if I start my career over. Let me, I probably wouldn't take as long to get through my career, but I definitely want to build up through my career. Welcome, Savvy. All right, y'all. I'm a girl who's a new Savvy. All right. We feeling the new Savvies. I feel my old Savvies, too. I like y'all. I love y'all. I don't just like y'all. I love y'all. But yeah, definitely. I'm so happy you, that was helpful. I'm so happy that was helpful. Um, Let me see if I can hit on some more stuff because I'm telling y'all, the best way to get the job is to get interviews. And the best way to get the interview is to make sure your resume is on point. Um, if you've been out of college for over five years, put your education to the bottom. We'll need to see that. We're looking for re relevant skills. We're looking for recent skills. We're looking for recent education. Um, some hard skills that you can use. Let me give you all some examples of hard skills. So remember when I said you can just group them according to hard skills or soft skills? Some hard skills would be like platforms or programs or even apps you've used. Y'all, do not take these apps for granted. Like, there are communication apps that you can definitely put on there to say, I know how to adapt. Um, so, like Asana. I don't know if y'all have ever used that. That's like a project management system. QuickBooks, um, Python, Ruby, Java. Those are all like more engineering and, and stuff like that. HTML. Adobe, Adobe is a common one. Canva is a common one. Common one. Those are like hard skills. Your soft skills are going to be like communication, partnership, integrity, problem solving, being organized. Those are your soft skills. Um, so make sure that you put, if you want to group them that way, you want to kind of do it like that. Um, <laughs> Now, this is a big thing. If a job description calls for required skills and you have those required skills, even if you don't have all of them, because let me be clear. Let me pause. I try to tell y'all this all the time, and I'm going to tell y'all again. I'm I tell anybody who around me, I tell them this. A job description is a hiring manager's wish list. They're probably not going to get everything on it. You know, it come Christmas time, I can go ahead. Let's say I had a boo, right? Oh, I love me. So I love my boo. He always buy me everything I want. So I give him a list of 20 things. I want a Louis bag. I want a, um, you know, Range Rover car. I want all of these high item things, 20 things on it. He ain't, he probably ain't gonna get none of them. I mean, you know, if he do, he probably ain't getting all of them. You know what I'm saying? I just, I am not lucky to date them kind of men, but you know, <laughs> be prepared. Like my sister, I'm gonna give her a list. She ain't getting none of them stuff. She might get me a gift card I want or something like that. That's the same thing for these hiring managers. If they're wish list. They know they ain't getting all of it. So don't be scared. Like, I don't know how to do this. One line. Two lines. You, Well, I ain't know how to do everything. I'm a female and there are quite, quite a bit of things I'm still learning about how to be a female. We ain't going to know everything. So don't y'all get scared away from that. But if it's hard skills or tenure is required, make sure that if you had that experience, you put it in your resume. That'll pull an applicant tracking system and that'll definitely get you an interview. Y'all need to, y'all do me a favor. Hold on, let me see what these questions are saying, then we'll go back to that. Do human resources managers train entry-level HR personnel? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, if they have them in the department, I hope so. If they have HR people in their department at entry level, they better be prepared to train them. I mean, uh, I hope I'm answering that question right. Sierra, I got you, cuz. I got you. Get them things out the check, because everybody ain't got blood. We don't share blood with everybody. Everybody else don't get them advantages you get. They got to come up off the... But I'm going to look at it. Um, Text me your number, Sierra. I don't know if I got your number. I think your mama texted it to me, but text me. How do you feel about candidates submitting resumes but not completing the application? How No, the question should be how I feel about these people who can actually put this damn long-ass application and they can actually put your resume. To my resume, you say the same goddamn thing. <laughs> that should be the question. Um, I'll say when I worked for a smaller organization, I thought I took that as lazy. I took that as not having initiative. Um, I took that as not really being eager for the job. And I used to immediately reject people. I'm so embarrassed to say I did that because now I'm like, no, I should have made my application shorter. I should have let them just upload a resume 
and made the application of all the things I just need. So that's going to depend on your on your talent acquisition specialist. That's why it's super important to get on LinkedIn and connect with talent acquisition people. How y'all going to find them people? Let me tell y'all. Y'all get into LinkedIn and do a search at the top. Instead of search for a name, search talent acquisition. Said, um, search recruiter. These people are going to come up in your list. And if they work for a company or they're recruiting for a company you want to work for, request them. Okay? Another thing is do hashtags, like now hiring now, hiring now, talent acquisition specialist, recruiter, like, you know, job search, um, career search, those type of things. Hashtag them things. You can easily find some talent acquisition specialists. Connect with them. And then what you can do is you automatically, oh, see, are you good? You had to take your message out. <laughs> um, but, well, that's good for the replay. <laughs> but anyhow, um. But what you can do is when you connect with them, they'll tell you which parts of the application they're really concerned on. And sometimes what they'll do is they'll take your LinkedIn profile and dump it into the applicant tracking system. So connect with people because sometimes we, we add no more steps for no reason. I literally can take your LinkedIn profile and dump it into my applicant tracking system where you ain't never even apply. Like you ain't touch it. I just talked to you in the inbox or DM. Get out these people DMs for dates and get them DMs for jobs. Get your coins. Get your money. All right. Sorry. Y'all got me excited. Uh, what would you say is a good progression to being a manager? HR assistant, HR coordinator, HR journalist, talent acquisition, HR manager. So the good progression, in my opinion, I mean, you can do HR assistant, but I would say HR assistant slash HR coordinator. You and me both. They're pretty much the same. So one of the two. Um, HR journalist for sure. Because HR journalist is going to automatically do some jobs or some duties that talent acquisition do. So you don't really need to be in talent acquisition. So I definitely say HR assistant slash coordinator, one of the two. HR journalist or slash HR business partner, because business partner and journalist are the same thing, pretty much. Um, and then you can go into being a manager. That should easily show your skills into being a manager. You know, if you have like a senior journalist, a senior BP, then that's a good step to get you warmed up before you just jump into being a manager. That's a good step. Um, but you ain't got to go through all them steps. It's so funny because I look, I don't know if I still got it. I did like a career ladder for myself when I first started my HR degree. I mean, my HR career. And Lord, I look back at that thing and I was like, damn, I pretty much followed this. But I really didn't even need to follow all of this. If only I had social media back in the day and had known a little bit more stuff back in the day. But um, yeah, so I would start HR assistant or coordinator. Don't waste your time doing both because you're just losing money. Like either do one out of the two because they ain't going to pay you no money to be a coordinator or assistant. You ain't get no ton of money there. So do one or the other. Go into being either a generalist or a business partner. Be careful because I'm generalist and business partners. The money can range. You might get the generalist and business partner. Now you won't be a manager because generalist and business partners get paid well too. Talent acquisition specialists get paid well too. Especially the ones that get bonuses and commission. I don't know if Big D still in here, but Big D, you getting bonuses and commission? If you get bonuses and commission, you just go stay in talent and don't go nowhere. Because <laughs> you just finding people all day and making stupid money just to hire them and bring them in the door. Um, and then you can go into management. Management, you you know the duties come with that. So be prepared. Be 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 ready to know the organization. Did I give you all enough tips in here? Because um, I forgot what I was about to ask y'all earlier. Darn. You agree? Okay, cool. I'm a girl. Um, let's see if I can give y'all some more tips. I need y'all to get on LinkedIn. That's what I was about to ask y'all. I was going to ask y'all to please put a one in the chat if y'all have a LinkedIn profile. If you have a LinkedIn profile, put a one in the chat. I need to know who all have a LinkedIn profile because I need to know what I need to tell y'all, how I need to hit this next topic because it's another way to just scoop past even worrying about the application and get the job. T is still draining. But the money is good. It is good. So go when you leave from TA, go into like journalist or business partner and make sure that if you stay with the same organization, I wouldn't stay with the same organization. I feel like you learn so much more when you change organizations. But if you stay with the same organization, make sure you pay attention to your pay because it's going to be a crazy pay change. Um, It, it could be a crazy pay change. You want to make, I didn't mean to say it's going to be crazy because it shouldn't be. It. It could be depending on the type of organization, size of organization, the industry. But um, the biggest thing you want to do is make sure that you're not taking less money to be a journalist from being a talent acquisition person. You know what I'm saying? 
Whatever role you do, once you're done with talent, make sure that if you're going to generalist, you should be get more money as y'all go through these careers. Don't don't get less money or the same money or fifty cents more, a dollar more. I ain't got time for that fifty cent and a dollar because taxes get eat that up. Make sure y'all going for like you know thirty percent increase. You know, thirty percent increase. So that means if I'm making a hundred thousand dollars, I will make thirty thousand more dollars. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I have an associate's degree. Yvette Sola, hey Yvette, I have an associate's degree in HR. And I don't have experience in HR or payroll or any skills, anything like that. How can I do a good interview with a panel? First of all, have you gotten an interview? Is that like you already got the job? Like your resume already got you in there for interviews? Help me understand that. Now, if you, because that's, you really need to, before we worry about the interview or if it's with a panel or a single person, we got to look at a way to get the interview. So if you already got the interview, then I'm going to finish off and answer your question. But if you're trying to figure out, well, how do I do once I get into the interview, but you ain't had no interviews lined up, ain't nobody sending you no emails, ain't nobody sending you a calendar invite, nobody sent you a link to jump on an interview, nobody gave you an address to be somewhere, then let's talk about how you can get them interviews to begin with. And then we can talk about your interview skills. But if you're on my email list, Yvette, then I already sent out... Um, when as soon as you sign up for my email list, you automatically get a freebie back, and that freebie goes over like really good questions and stuff. Oh, all y'all got uh, LinkedIn. I love it. I keep hearing horror stories about TA. No, it, it horror stories everywhere. It depends on your culture at any company. You can get a horror story anywhere. You can be in a job you absolutely love and still be like, God damn, I hate going to work. It depends on the culture of the co uh, organization. And make sure you like you're doing something you like, then you don't have to worry about horror stories. Review chic, hey boo. I haven't seen you in a while. You and, and Big D just popping back up on me. Y'all went AWOL for a while. And see y'all when I'm giving out these freebies and stuff, and now y'all pop back up. But I sure appreciate y'all popping back up. You know, y'all must be so in. I sure appreciate this uh, bad weather. So I'm in TA, but I want to own my own recruiting firm to make 19K a pop. You can easily do that these days. Everybody looking for it. But the biggest thing before you start owning your own recruiting firm, Review Chic, you want to make sure that you are building a network. Because the best way to make sure that people are going to get you to be their recruiting firm is if you can tell them, I know a whole bunch of people and I know a whole bunch of places I can get you in. Another thing is you want to make sure that you have jobs to put these people on. I had a job that interviewed me and they literally said like, we only have um, one site and 25 employees. That was it. They wanted me to help build up their network to get more companies, to get them to recruit for them and then to get more employees. You want to make sure that you got a good network so that when you pop out there or that you know how to build your network so that when you pop out there, you have companies that are signing on contracts that's asking you, hey, I want you to find my people. There's a lot of com competition and recruiting firms. There's, they're everywhere. They like, they like you know, trees. They planted everywhere. So you got so much competition, you got to stand out, figure out how you're going to stand out, build your network, get these companies to know that you're the person you should go to. So go ahead and work for a staffing agency and start using that to build your network um, before you start just running out there by yourself. And then, the, you know, you can make stupid money at recruiting firms. I ain't going to lie. And be honest with you. I don't know if I even want to own a recruiting firm. My pastor said that to me, um, my old pastor, a couple pastors ago. He said to me, that, hey, T, because he worked in HR, we had like a whole bunch of us in my church that work in HR. And he was like, we should just start a recruiting firm. I don't want that headache. I can make 19K a pop working for somebody else. So do I want to just make 19K a pop? Um, or do I want to run a business? That's a big difference. You know, I know a couple people that work in talent and their bonuses be, you know, $30,000, you know, every quarter, $60,000 a quarter, plus a base of like, you know, 80,000. So they taking home 150, 160,000. I'll take that home happily. Why? I don't know. I like money. I like money and all. But I want to be able to enjoy it. I don't know if I want to run no business doing that. I feel like that. Because you'll never get time off in a recruiting firm. People call you all the time. It just, I don't know. I noticed that to make that money, you got to be available a lot. Oh, you love TA. That's what's up. I love TA too. Did y'all know that I just started as a senior um, TA specialist? So I love TA. I ain't going to lie. But to me, it's two things. It's like, if you're going to pay me right, if you're going to let me work from home, and if you're going to give me a good culture where everybody get along, everybody know how to respect everybody. So I really like it for that. It'll be interesting to see where my career goes next. That'd be interesting. Um, sadly, no. I apply, but get rejected. Yvette, you, you might have came on late. Go back to the beginning. When we get off this thing, go back and replay the beginning. 
because I want you to get that resume right. Once you get that resume right, then you're going to get interviews. And then once you get confident in your skills, look in the mirror, pay attention to yourself, see how you look when you answer these questions. You know, once you get comfortable with yourself, it ain't matter if you interviewing one person, that don't matter if you interviewing where you recording yourself, because a lot of people doing that too, where you literally just looking at yourself and answering questions, you reading the question, then answering it. Um, or if you're in a panel interview, it ain't going to matter what kind of interview you're in, you got it. You know what I'm saying? So don't get nervous about the interview unless maybe you're an introvert and you don't like a bunch of people. So help me with that. Maybe that's what it is. Um, Sam, you got LinkedIn and you don't use it. No information at oh, all, Lord, Sam. You got to get it right. Yeah, Raven, I think you can make a lot of money in LinkedIn because people got money over there. They need hair products, honey. All righty. Hey, Review Chic. Samantha, stop building your LinkedIn profile and watch how you grow. Tell her, Big D. So, you know, I, I be hitting on them, but that's my cousin. I don't want her to think I'm beating up on it too bad. But if y'all want the money getting into LinkedIn, did y'all know that on average, um, they did a... Uh, they, did, they pulled research from LinkedIn, and on average, the average person that uses LinkedIn makes six figures. Get on LinkedIn. Get up off of Facebook. Ain't them, them boy ain't making nothing but pennies on Facebook. Go on LinkedIn and make that money. Surround yourself with where you want to be, and then you're going to get there. Because it's, it's real easy to just, I mean, now I know a couple people that are looking for jobs that I get these pop-ups. Like, I get alerts with jobs that tell me the range, how much it's making, if it's remote or not, blah, blah, blah. And I also get a ton of emails. And, y'all, i just been firing them off, like, to clients. I send them to them, but I primarily send them to people I know. Like, and I'm like, hey, that's a job. Hey, that's a job. See, LinkedIn going to trigger jobs that you either qualify for or that you've done in the past or what have you, or maybe, and a good thing about it too is recruiters be in there. See, we don't have to be in the front where y'all can see us, look at your profile. We're in a thing called LinkedIn Recruiter. So we can go in there and I can say, I want a female that went to a school, to this school or this type of school, and I want them to live in this region, and I want them to have this number of years experience, and I want them to have these skills, and bam, LinkedIn will give me like 500 people. Then I'm probably going to say, I want them to work here in the past. I want them to work at this company now because I maybe I want to hit a competitor company. And now it's going to shrink that group down to 100. So now I'm going to say I want somebody instead of three to five years of experience, I want somebody with five to seven years of experience. So now LinkedIn going to make it down to like 30 people. And now I'm going to send a blast email to 30 of them people. Hey, here's my link. I love to learn more about you. I, would, I see that you have skills that match positions that I have. And I'm very, very interested in learning you more. So what I want to do is get you on my schedule. Please use this link so that you can schedule some time with me. That's what recruiters do. Just like that. Honey, we be killing it. Tell them, Big D, we'll be doing LinkedIn. We be in there all day long. Yes, 30 minutes a day and let it grow. And y'all, LinkedIn is different from Facebook. You ain't got no them people. Don't look at their connections. Don't be like, oh, I don't have no connections with them. Think about it as, you know what? I absolutely would love to work at Google. Oh, my God. I totally would love to work for Bank of America. Oh, I'd love to work for Cash App. Think about things like, oh, look on the apps on your phone, the ones you be on all the time. Oh, I love to work for Instagram. Oh, I love to work for Facebook. Look at, you know, oh, I love to work for Apple. Oh, I love to work for Android, whoever. Go in there, follow those companies on LinkedIn. Hash, follow their hashtags. Follow their talent acquisition specialists. Follow their HR team. Follow who is working in a position that you want to work in. So if it's not HR and you're like, oh, but I really want to work on this. Because, Sam, you and I, you've you been working with phones for a minute. I know you've been doing, you know, credit and stuff. Man, listen, go work for Bank of America. Okay, bam. Bank of America. First Federal, um, you know, Wells Fargo. Look at some of these national banks. Them people letting you work from home and you got credit activation experience. You got tech experience. Sam, if you don't get a LinkedIn and kill that thing right now, go make that money sitting at your house. I don't even use, I don't even take the car to the garage. You're just staying there. I have gas for all a week and two weeks. For my car one time, $40, bam, last me for three weeks. That's how good it is to work from home. And you make even more money because these companies are willing to pay. So get in LinkedIn, hashtag these companies, follow them, follow their recruiters so that you can see when they're doing a virtual event, a virtual, just yesterday, I just did a virtual job fair online where I, my um, VP of HR, she introduced everyone that came on to not only who the hiring manager is, the person you're going to interview with, which will kill some of that anxiety about having a panel interview like my girl asked me earlier because you already see them you already see how they talk you already see what their language is like you already see what they're hitting on but she interviewed them let them each do a lightning speech to say hey this is what i'm looking for now you already know 
what kind of job, I'm, what kind of skills I'm looking for, what kind of person I'm looking for. Like each manager went through exactly what they're looking for. And then each talent acquisition specialist went through and said, hey, this is how you can make the process better for you. This is how you can make it easier for you. Y'all, I'm doing another one on February 3rd. So jump on. If y'all really interested to um, work with the company I work with, then I am doing another, or my company is doing another recruiting event on February 3rd. I think we're doing it either at 9 or 11 Central Standard Time. Um, and so follow me because I put the link in my in my profile so that people can jump on. All you got to do is link in. It's a nice little Zoom. And you can learn all about all the positions we have. And the good thing about it is our February 3rd program, um, February 3rd fair, we're going to talk about all non-sales positions. So this week we talked about all sales positions. If y'all want to work in something that's not sales, then jump on. But companies are doing that. So follow talent acquisition specialists so that you can see when they're having virtual events, so that you can see when they're posting that they're looking for a particular person, so that you can see exactly what skills they're looking for. Because we ain't going to put the whole job description on our post. I'm going to hit like three to four things. Bam. I need you to have this, 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 this. Now you're not read the job description and get overwhelmed. When my post then tell you what I'm looking for, you know? Okay. All right. See, y'all get me excited. See, Big D and he helping. He helping me. He pushing me. <laughs> he pushing me. Um, he making me come in with this energy. Hey, Jen and Jay Adventures. Hey, boo. Hey, so happy to see you back. You welcome, Sam. And intimidating. You ain't know them people. Go on and connect with people you don't even damn know. It don't matter. Um, it seems like so much, but you ability. It's it been a lot when you start on Facebook too, right? It's been a lot then too. You made it work. Make LinkedIn work. Facebook, you just hanging out and having some quality time, some wind down time. LinkedIn, you making money, honey. So I don't know. I'm motivated by the money. <laughs> if I'm like, well, I can get money there. Okay, what I got to do? Oh, okay. All right. Um, And it depends on how that money coming. All right. Yeah. Oh, Lord. I love when y'all get the chat going crazy. I sure can't keep up. I'm sorry, I'm behind y'all. I'm going to catch up. It's good to have a LinkedIn learning searching HR to obtain information. I hope that's what I gave you, but it is good to have one. But if, you, if you're not real comfortable with LinkedIn, just go on YouTube and search LinkedIn and people will teach you how to use it. Mm -hmm. I'm in ER, but want to move into TA. Is this a demotion, lateral, or promotion? It depends on you, baby. If you're in ER and you go on to TA, the demotion, the lateral, or the promotion depends on how much you're making, right? So in my opinion, it's not a title for me that tells me if I'm going for, not all the time. Especially when I'm changing, like I'm, you're pivoting in HR. It's not like you're going from, a, okay, I've been working at a, as a generalist and now I'm apply as a coordinator or assistant. You're going from one aspect of HR to another. So you have to look at what works for you to consider that a demotion or a promotion. Talent acquisition specialist people make some money. And in a lot of cases, um, you can either make the same or more money than working in employee relations. I'll tell you one thing for sure, a less headache. Less headache and talent acquisition, in my opinion, because all I'm doing is looking for people. And employee relations, I'm trying to make everybody happy. So I wouldn't look at it as a demotion. I would look at it more as lateral, not a demotion or a promotion. You know, you looking at, I want to do something I enjoy. That's a promotion to me because now I'm not going into something that's giving me a headache every day. I'm going into something I enjoy. You welcome, Sam. Sam, connect with me on LinkedIn. Connect with Big D on LinkedIn. I forgot Big D, real name. But I'll, I'll forward this profile. Information about different roles often in HR. Um, what kind of information you want about different roles often in HR? There's so many roles now. I told y'all a couple of lives ago that I was watching something on CBS, watching the news, and they were saying that there's going to be like a 40% increase in the type of jobs that are available. So one thing that me and my cousin and also me and my VP were talking about is that um, it's been so crazy because people are so used to talent acquisition specialists and you doing everything. So you you sourcing or looking for your candidates, trying to find your candidates, you you pitching them. If they're not, if they have your skill set and you have like a weak candidate pool, so maybe I only got like 20 applications and I really want 200. So I go out there and I'm a source for those candidates. And now I really want to source the skills I'm looking for. So you got to do all of that work just to get people in there to apply. And then you go and you schedule them. They might not show up for interviews. So now you still need to get more people because they probably can't show up. Maybe they go through the interview process and they decide they take another job offer. So you want to build up a good, good pool of candidates and stuff. Um, <clears throat> so now the new jobs that are coming up and that's becoming more common as a sorcerer position. That really wasn't a common position before in HR. But now I've noticed that there's tons of sorcerer positions where you're not you're not doing the actual interviews, you're not doing the actual 
um, job offers, but you're literally just going through and finding the candidates to get them to the recruiter. So it's, it's a bunch of different roles. Now, if you want me to just tell you about the basic ones that we talked about a little bit earlier, I can do that. Um, but if you want me to tell you about all of them, we be here all night, girl, and we already over an hour. <laughs> Yes, Sam, be on it. Demetrius Russell, see, follow that man on LinkedIn because he's a recruiter too. You are so welcome, Jen and Jay. You got it, have a girl. I don't give nothing but facts, girl. You know, I don't give nothing but facts. Y'all watch my video, y'all know. Girl, don't give nothing but facts. I ain't believing all of that gas in your head. Up. <laughs> um, I love LinkedIn recruiter too. It went down for us. What? No, that was an internal reason. <laughs> so I just said, did it go down for you? No, that was an internal reason. But yeah, I love LinkedIn recruiter. You are so so welcome, Yvette. Don't play with it, Sam. I'm looking for your connection. I'm looking for your connection on LinkedIn. Yes, Big D, help me. See, Big D making sure I stay on point. He know I'm doing this big ad hoc live. I'm really planning. I'm going off some tips I got on my phone, but I really, y'all know, I normally try to write out some points. But Big D is on it. Please don't go in there and just follow them. Make sure you hit like. Make sure you just comment something quick. If they say, oh, somebody tag them and say, hey, you know, I'm so happy so-and-so found me and now I'm starting my new career. So just, just type in and say congratulations. And more of those posts will come up to you. You'll notice that you get more and more people requesting you versus you requesting people. And you'll notice that more and more of that company's information or that person's information will start coming up on your timeline. You build your own timeline by your activity on LinkedIn. So make sure you follow hashtags, that you comment on stuff, that you like stuff, um, you know, that you share stuff and LinkedIn will just populate your profile. Startup companies scare me though. Why you want to do a startup, huh, my girl? What kind of work you doing? What kind of work you doing? Don't do no startups, man. You do too much work in startups. And startups not, I feel like I hear more of startups are more common in other countries than the U.S., particularly India. So what kind of startups are you doing? I wouldn't do a startup. I get the hell up out of startup. A startup is a lot of work. A startup reminds me of my old church. We had a super small church when I was growing up. And we get in there, we have like a fundraiser program. And when you come, I'm meeting you at the door and give you the program to go have a seat. So I'm the usher. Then when you look, I'm up here doing a prayer. Then when you come to the back to have, you know, fellowship and eat, I'm back there serving the food too. That's what startups make me think about. I'm like, oh no, I don't want to do no startup. Let me come in and do one job and get a nice fat check versus... 50 jobs and get a sorry check. So get the hell up out them startups. Get in the LinkedIn like Big D said. Look at some of his suggestions. Go back and watch the beginning of this where I gave you suggestions. I'm going to give you some suggestions on LinkedIn because I didn't do that yet. I'm going to do that real quick. Um, Yeah, I wouldn't do no startup. Oh, you and TA will love to move the ER. That's funny because <laughs> Sophia is at ER. She want to move the TA. Why don't y'all go ahead and connect with each other on LinkedIn and help each other out? You will know what's going on. I don't know what's going on because you don't get a pain enough to know what's going on. Sometimes what's going on is a headache. And not all the times I can give a resolution. So that's another reason I don't want to be on there. Um, yes, I'm a girl. Connect with him. Connect with me too, I'm a girl on LinkedIn. Solving the world problems. That's it. So listen, y'all. For y'all on LinkedIn, I'm going to give y'all some tips on LinkedIn, which I feel like me and Big D already covered so much. Like, that's my boy right there. He done hooked y'all up for me. Look at it. Phone and reset. Back to what I've been on. Because I ain't get into what I wanted to get into. Um, But when you get on LinkedIn, some of the things you want to do is make sure you got a profile picture. Now, I don't care. And them other platforms, y'all don't really need a profile picture. But on LinkedIn, you need one. Then people will be like, well, I don't have a professional picture. You ain't need one. Take a damn selfie in the car. Go and download the Canva app or go to canva.com. Put it in there and definitely take out that background and crop it in so that I don't see your arm hanging out, but I just see you smiling. Okay? Just so y'all know, my LinkedIn picture, my picture on everything, hey, jar and everything, I took that in a hotel in Greenville when I was going to a party. And I had went to the mall and asked the girl, like I had my makeup on, but I was asking the girl to teach me some techniques. And she literally taught me the techniques and then finished beating my whole face. And I was like, oh man, my face looked real good. I'm aware tonight. And I got into the hotel and the light was good. And I was like, oh, some good lighting. Bam, took a picture. Now y'all seeing it everywhere. That picture right there that y'all see on my, on my YouTube page. Tell me if that wasn't a picture I took as a selfie in a hotel. 
So please don't come at me and talk about y'all ain't got no picture for LinkedIn because that don't make no sense. Headlines. Make sure y'all got headlines in it. Clearly state your job title in your headline, your interests and your goals. And make sure that it's, it's specific to what career you want to be in for your headline and LinkedIn. And then for your location, go ahead and put your location even if you want a remote position. Because when a, a recruiter looks for you, um, though you might live in the U.S., right, you might have skills for a position that we have where we can only hire a U.K. person. We can only hire an India person. We can only hire a Philippine person. So if we can only hire from those countries, now I know I can't pay you no attention because you're in the wrong country. So vice versa, too. Maybe I want somebody that's in the U.S. with these skills. And I don't want all these other people. Well, LinkedIn's going to bring up those people who have their location. So make sure you put your LinkedIn, your location in a LinkedIn. And, and, you know, it's an optional thing to do, but it's a nice thing to do to use the pronouns. They're giving you the option now to use the pronouns. But if you have one of those names where you're like, oh, they never know who I am, blah, blah, blah. They always mess up my name. Then use those pronouns, you know, she, her, him, those pronouns. So make sure you use those. Another good thing is make sure that you put in all your relevant experience, but relevant is the keyword. If it relates to what you're doing, if it re relates to your keywords that's in your profile, make sure that you're putting those in there. Make sure that you're doing your education, but don't be putting that GPA. Don't waste your time with that. And make sure that on LinkedIn, you know, you can always put groups that you're in. You can always put societies that you're in. You can always put, you know, if you're AKA, if you're a Delta, if you're... You've been in um, Kappa Psi, what have you. Then what you want to do is you want to put those in there too. If you've done volunteer work, put that in there too because you're giving them a full picture to say that I'm a well-rounded individual, right? So you can put that in the link then too. Another thing that you can do is put any licenses and certifications that you have. Um, you know, I have my licenses and certifications in there. I have that I'm a notary, which is back there somewhere. Um, I have that I'm I'm also an HR certified. Make sure you put those in there. Put in your volunteer experience on your LinkedIn profile too, if it relates to the position that you're looking for. Um, make sure that you put all relevant skills, soft skills or whatever that match the job descriptions of the most jobs that you're looking at. It's almost like your resume. So you, you know, it's, it's used a lot of time as a resume. Like I told you, if you go on a LinkedIn and you got that LinkedIn profile right, then what I could do is just feed that information to my applicant tracking system, which means your LinkedIn profile completed your job application. So put that in there. Um, and what they have quizzes on LinkedIn. And that's a good thing to kind of make you stand out because it's saying not only am I telling you in my job description or my job profile that I know how to do this, but I've already been tested by LinkedIn, LinkedIn and passed. So I've done some Excel tests in there. I've done some communication tests in there. They're really short. They're really quick. They'll give you a quick grade. But it's a good way to let the recruiters know that I'm serious about this. I really know how to do this stuff. I, already, I don't even need your test that you might give me during the interview process because I already took a test from LinkedIn, right? Um, make sure that you connect with like your coworkers, your managers, your classmates, your professors. Um, and again, like I told y'all connect with the people that work for the companies you want to work with as well. And some of the skills that y'all want to make sure you put in your resume. So back to that resume thing and your LinkedIn profile, but let's go back to how you're going to make sure that you attract, um, enough attention to get you an interview. Some of the skills that hiring managers value is like collaboration and cross-functional engagement. They also value problem-solving skills. They also value scope and impact. Like how much work have you done on what projects and what type of value did you bring out of that? You know, so if I've been working in sales for a long time, I want to say that I've worked with, you know, 10 different accounts. I started from you know, this account generating $20,000 per month in revenue to $200,000 per month in revenue. Like you want to show a scope of your work and how much you have really grown in that career and how much value you brought to that organization. Also, you want to show like mentor mentorship as well. Whenever you mentor somebody, somebody mentor you, you put that in there too. <laughs> um, but yeah. Let's see what y'all talking about in the chat. Y'all rolling. Y'all know we done been on this thing an hour and a half. Y'all ready? If y'all ready, get off, put a two in the chat. If y'all ready, get off, put a two in the chat. Um, I touched on them already. CA coordinator and journalist, I did. I appreciate it. Okay, cool. Uh huh. My LinkedIn is me on the golf course. Yeah, Big D had me laughing with his picture. I had to zoom in. I couldn't even see it that good. I said, what is Big D doing? I said, he on the golf course. I'll be down. Um... 
Think of your LinkedIn profile as a paint. Mm -hmm. Oh, go on, Big D. Big D is giving y'all the vibes, honey. I'm feeling Big D. He's killing it. Think of it as a paint, honey. Yes, yes. You try to paint this picture. It will grow and flourish as long as you're giving it attention. Then your plant starts catching the attention of prospective employees. Just like a plant, when you water it, you put it near that window, it's going to lean out that window. Because guess what? It's, it's, a, it's liking the attention that it's getting. So that's the same thing. He's so right. I love that. I love that analogy. Also, don't go out there and have a super professional LinkedIn profile about a ratchet Facebook profile. <laughs> I'm going to let Big D explain that one to y'all. Because once I look you up on LinkedIn, I don't go back and look at your Facebook. But <laughs> I don't look at the two. Listen, I don't want you listen to start coming up as a suggestion on my damn Facebook. Because that's my personal life. I mean, I cut off LinkedIn. Well, my mind is not thinking about work by the time I do that. Y'all are silly, man. Big D killing it. Big D, what other tips you got for the people? Because y'all ain't giving me no kind of tools if y'all want to get off the chat. Well, give me a one if y'all want to stay on. <laughs> I asked y'all for a two if y'all want to get off the chat. I ain't get no tools if y'all want to get off a live. Oh, Lord. I came in late, but I do suggest taking contract or source of TA positions for entry level for what salary do you? Hold on. I came in late, but do you suggest taking contract sourcer or TA positions? And for entry level, what salary you not take? Go back, because I went into good detail on how to search for um, salaries. So, and I went to tell you, like, how to know how much money to ask for. And so this is the biggest thing. The biggest thing is you don't want to take a job because you're so eager to work in that career. But at the end of the day, like, you can't put gas in your car to get to work. You know what I'm saying? Or you stuck working a part-time job at a full-time rate. So you thinking this is just going to be a part-time job to help you while you gain your skills. And then when you look, you you working 40 hours on a part-time job, 40 hours on a full-time job. So you don't want to take that low of a pay cut. But you definitely want to stay in range. You want to get the best bang for your buck. So I think on the three dumbest career mistakes... Either three dumbest career mistakes or destroying debt. One of the two of those videos, out of my last two videos, I went through and told you how to check salaries, how to get a range. So use those resources and look at how to get a range on your salaries. And for y'all who are watching the replay, I'm going to put the video right here. Um, but what you want to do is you want to use that to give you a range. And then what you want to do is make your decision on how much you want to get paid from that range. So I, I went over like Department of Labor, Salary.com. LinkedIn, indeed, like it's quite a few of them. And I went through some details of what to use, what to look for. I even give you the exact link to go on the Department of Labor website because the Department of Labor is like convoluted with information. And so I gave you all that information and look at those videos, see how much the range is and then pitch your, you know, how much you want to make from that. And then if it's, if the whole range is below where you want to be, or you notice that your lifestyle decreased, because you saw this range, then look at gathering all the skills you can and keep building your network and keep applying. Even if you have this job, you love it. That's a real cool job. They're real cool. I like them here. It don't matter. They ain't paying enough for you to live. Um, so make sure that you keep building your network, specifically through LinkedIn um, and other groups on LinkedIn and other groups, professional groups on Facebook. Um, follow hashtags on IG as well, you know, career coach, things like that, so that you can keep leveling up your skills and keep putting yourself out there to elevate. Cool. I hope I answer your question with that. Oh, DJ, DJ ready to get off. DJ, oh, DJ ready to stay on. Two was to get off. All right, DJ. DJ said she wants to stay on. I see none of y'all. None of y'all said one or two. One of y'all want to stay on too if you want to get off, off of there. Um, but I can keep begging y'all because obviously y'all don't be here because y'all got the chat going. I love it. Um, you're taking all the gems, honey. Especially when you got Big D on here to help me out. Um, someone that reviews resumes and interviews daily. I'm looking for a person that wears the best cap. Yeah, that's true. But I ain't got time. DJ, um, Big D, how you got time to be going back to their Facebook? I don't be having that kind of time. I barely got time to look through their resume. I mean, I'm like, oh, no. Look, click. Look, look, click. I'm ready to move on. Um, But, yeah, you definitely want to put your best foot forward. Yay! I'm so happy y'all enjoying us. Yes, yes. Communication skills is important. 
I came in late as well, but I'm rewatching the video from all the... Yes, I'm dropping them, honey. Me and Big D dropping them on y'all tonight. I hope y'all ready. He's still going in the chat. Watch that. Big D, Big D, Big D. Um, And, he, and we already gave y'all our information to connect with us on LinkedIn. Yes, attitude, personality, yes. Yeah, if you really put yourself out there... You let me tell y'all something. If y'all put yourself out there real well on LinkedIn, I can't tell y'all how many times throughout my career, and I literally just was doing this like a couple weeks ago. I was so mad we lost that candidate. Like, if you that good, we'll pretty much be begging you to take the job. And then I've had people who be like, cool, but how much y'all offering? Like off top. Because I don't find you. You get an advantage when candidate when applicants or recruiters find you. You get such an, an advantage when recruiters find you. Just keep in mind that you already, when you're on LinkedIn and a recruiter reach out to you, you already 20 steps ahead of other people who trying to look for the job, who trying to apply for the job, and who ain't get a call back. You got the recruiter finding you. So hit them with the questions you really want to know. Say, hey, you know, I appreciate it. I do want to learn more about your organization. But I want to know how much are you offering for this role. Now, that's the time that I tell you, throw money out there quick. And don't hurt the recruiter um, feelings. Because you don't waste the recruiter's time and you don't waste your time. Now you can easily say, well, what's the price range? You know, what's the compensation range on this? You know, if you're looking for a position that gives, like, comps and commissions and bonuses, now you can say, well, what's the base? Okay, what's the, the total max that I can make base and commission and bonuses? You know, go ahead and hit them questions. Because they, when they find you on LinkedIn, you already got the advantage. Like, you... You have came up because they are searching for your skill set, your talent, whatever that comes with you. So y'all hit them heavy, man. When y'all get on LinkedIn, you get the advantage automatically. Ain't like Facebook. You ain't gonna never get nobody in your inbox on my head. I got a job for you. That's so rare. I, if y'all let y'all connect with me, <laughs> me and my cousin Donnie, we be in it. Um. Oh, thanks, Reva. Like a little HR talk. <laughs> Facebook. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Be careful on them other um sites. Be careful with about what you comment too, because when I connect with you as a as a talent person, you know, all your comments that you put on somebody else's post will come up too. So, you know, be careful. When you see them controversial posts, you can like them and stuff like that, but be careful with how you reply with those things. Um, so happy y'all wanna stay on. Shakira, I'm so happy to see you up in here. I figure so, big D. I figure so. <laughs> um, 35K for remote source. I gotcha. Hmm. But Jen and Jay, did you have HR experience already? Or are you just trying to start your career? Because that's that's about the range. A source is a very entry-level position. Um, It's not a bad thing to go ahead and get in there as a sourcer and have a game plan ready where... A month after you start, because you want to spend like a month trying to make sure you're comfortable with the job, you know the job, you you listen to the lingo, you don't want to, you know, that you paying attention to the software you're using, the tools you're using. You know, sources can use LinkedIn as a tool, they can use Indeed as a tool, they can use um, um, Lead IQ as a tool, they can use Hire Tool as a tool, they can use Seek Out as a tool. There's so many tools that you can use as talent acquisition specialists to find your talent. So you want to make sure that you're learning those tools, you're learning the names, you're learning why you use them, when you use them, that kind of stuff. So give yourself like a month. If that's a job you want to do, let's say you go ahead, you apply for it, you already, you know, got that resume that's going to pull you in, you get that job, and they might give you a little quiz to tell you, hey, go out, this is a little test we want you to do, you got 48 hours to send it back. Um, then, you know, go on a place like YouTube to get help with the homework if you, if it kind of catch you off guard, but make sure you knock out that homework or whatever, we call it homework. Um, and then once you get that job, like spend like a, a month learning that job and getting comfortable with it. And by your second month, start applying like a fool other places. Update your resume, all the stuff you know you're using and stuff like that. Because that's so entry level. It's just, I don't know. Unless you're comfortable with 35K. I know I ain't comfortable with 35K. So, you know, I start there. I use LinkedIn salary and I was like, they're low balling for real. Doing LinkedIn salary ain't a good source now. If you look back at my other two videos, I did not tell you to check LinkedIn salary. To compare salaries. LinkedIn is a lot like LinkedIn be giving wrong numbers. I post too many jobs on LinkedIn and been like, what? That's not the salary. And I've seen them post all over the place. So I've seen them post way too low and I've seen them post way too high. Like LinkedIn is just not a good place to pay attention to the salary. I wouldn't trust that. I would compare that with a myriad of data. So go back and look at that video. It's one of the two of my last two videos. Well, I went through and told you some good resources to find real data on salaries. 
um, that job can be offered more than 35K. You don't even know now because you just use LinkedIn. So go look and see what, what does it look like to be a sourcer? What does it look like to be a sourcer in that industry? What does it look like to be a sourcer with this number of years experience? What does it look like to be a sourcer, um, you know, in your region or your area of the United States or wherever you live? Look at all of those factors and let that help you see if that 35K was a right number that LinkedIn gave. LinkedIn usually will give a range. They usually don't give a spot on salary. They usually give like a little range. But LinkedIn ranges be wrong. Big D, what do you think? I think LinkedIn ranges be wrong. Like you've ever paid attention to the ranges? They don't really show us the ranges as recruiters. But if we go to apply for jobs or look at other jobs, we can see what range they put up. They're always wrong. Um. Yes, check out my job fair. Oh, I love it. Yes, we're going to have it. I think it's February 3rd. Yes, February 3rd. Just follow me on LinkedIn. I'll post it again because I'll post it after we get the link. Um, Awesome chat as always. Good. Okay, good night, Jen and Jay. I really enjoyed you too. I really enjoyed you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Big D agreed with me too, too though, Jen and Jay. Before you get off, Big D agreed. Those salaries don't be right on LinkedIn. He agreed. He's a TA specialist. He knows. All right, y'all. <clears throat> we get on two hours. So I'm about to get off of here, too. Anybody got anything specific they want to ask? Because I am going to get off. Y'all see me trying to finish off this little... This thing don't taste right here. Don't y'all buy this or, um Stella Rosa. I think my sister drinking this bottle. And I'm just trying to finish it off. You know, I don't waste the stuff, but... That's not good stuff. Y'all ain't got to worry about me putting my dollars into that. Listen, y'all, I'm going to try my best. This is my plan. And if y'all get my emails and y'all already know the plan, and I already gave y'all opportunity to reply back and tell me if you like the plan or not, and I told y'all I make adjustments because I'm doing this for you guys. But listen, my plan is to go live every Thursday at 7 p.m. The only reason I didn't go live last night is because I went and saw Eric Thomas in person. Um, So that was awesome. And then I figured, well, I'll go live tonight because this really hit my, my spirit because I want y'all to find these jobs. So I'm going to be live every Thursday. It's only going to be one time out of the month that I'll have a guest on. So y'all know last week we had a guest on. It'll be until the end of February or the beginning of February, I believe, that I'll have another guest and that'll be it. So I'm only doing one guest per month every time we're going to get in here and do what we're doing right now. Like we're going to get in here and kill a chat. Big D, tell me if, big, if Thursdays work for you so you can help me. When we can talk about these job search stuff. If not, and I just like you being here. Like, forget you helping me. I just like Big D being here. Big D was here, y'all, when I used to have, like, three people in the, in, in the, <laughs> in the um, chat. Well, not even the chat. I don't even want to say the chat. I used to have, like, three people on the live. And, like, two, maybe one person commenting in the chat. Chat don't ever move. So I appreciate Big D. He is a longtime supporter. Um, watched so many of my videos and he watched them in detail. He'll get into the video and put like the minute and a second where something made him laugh and stuff. So it's so funny. I love it. Um, but Big D, if this works for you, totally have enjoyed this live. Great content, great responses. Yes, yes. So yeah, if we can do that, then we're going to stick with Thursdays at 7. We're going to still keep that thing happy hour. Y'all know by the time I start running out, I'm ready to get up off the call. Anyhow, so um, I'm going to do topics randomly unless you guys tell me which ones you want. A great way to tell me which topics you want is to sign up for my email list and just reply to the email and say, hey, Tamika, can you do a video on this or can you do a live on this? Or I want to talk to you about this in person, um, I mean, on the live. And so that's a great way to do that. So look out Thursdays at 7 Eastern time. And y'all know I'm in the Eastern time zone, your sister in Charleston, South Carolina. And so what we're also going to do is um, I have sent out my first actual like newsletter. Y'all know I've been sending out emails, but this time I'm going to, I sent out like an actual newsletter to go over different parts. So as time goes on, you guys are going to start getting emails that's catered to what you selected when you sign up for the email for the, the email newsletter. So if you say, oh, I just want to know about YouTube, then I'm only going to start sending you emails about YouTube. If you're like, oh, I want to know about the hiring process, if I want to know about it being an HR manager, HR director, you're going to start getting emails catered to that. So give me some feedback in the um, emails and let me know if y'all liking them or if you want me to change some stuff. So that's a great way to stay in contact with me. Another great way to stay in contact with me, and you guys were really good about this on the last live, 
um, when I was by myself. And even like in my LinkedIn or when I post stuff on IG, you guys are really good about asking me questions. Y'all know I will respond just like I did tonight, but I'm gonna cut off at some at a certain point because when it starts getting too detailed, then we just need to get on a call. So if you guys are like, Tamika, how can I get on a call with you? In my description box is a link that says, hey, you want to do a one-on-one -on -one chat or one-on-one -on -one conversation? And calls are as low as $29.97 or as high as, I think, $2.99. It depends on which one you choose, $299. So it depends on which one you choose. Um, but we, I always say in those things that you get 30 minutes or you get an hour. But y'all... If I didn't, if I was okay with telling y'all who my clients were, then I'd say, hey, client, tell me if you got 30 minutes. I haven't done a 30-minute call yet. I charge you for 30 minutes, and I still give an hour. Um, and so we'll see how long that lasts. But, you know, I try to give value. I make sure to give value back in those calls. If you decide that you want to have more strategic calls, then I give you feedbacks. But if you just have, like, hey, I have this situation. I really want to talk this through with you. Then you can do a quick call at any time. Pick the one that caters to you. Please don't pick the one that just got the best price. Pick the one that caters to you because that tells me how much I need to be prepared. That tells me how many resources I need to give back to you. That tells me how many how much time I need to give to you. So you're paying for so many different things. Don't cut yourself short by saying, hey, I'm going for this $29.99 because then you're going to get cut off real quick and you ain't going to get no resources back. So don't do that to yourself because your, your plan is to get your career better. Um, so Another great thing I want y'all to know is that I go, I post a video on Tuesday. So normally I'm doing it at 6 p.m., but um, I migrated since I started working back home. I migrated back to 1 p.m. Eastern time. So my videos normally come out on Tuesdays. I go live on Thursdays. So I am going to vlog uh, Eric Thomas's whole um situation so i vlogged last night and i'm gonna vlog tomorrow night as well so that video is coming out i moved my daughter into college so that vlog is coming out and i already have some videos on hr certification so that's coming out y'all we got a ton of videos for y'all so set your alerts make sure you subscribe make sure you follow me on linkedin i post videos there make sure you follow me on ig i give reminders there sometimes i go live there too Make sure that you sign up for my email alerts because I'll go back and see your email and say, hey, if you missed it, this is what you missed. Make sure that you set, don't just subscribe, but make sure that you hit that bell and don't hit the bell one time, but hold down on that bell and go from just personalized to all. So y'all, I really enjoy y'all tonight. I really had such a good time. Big D, I really got to give a shout out to you. I appreciate you for helping me moderate the chat and helping folks out there. Sophia. You can do this. DJ, you got this. Come on, Jenna J. Even though I think she got off. Sam, I'm looking for a connection um, on LinkedIn. And so, y'all, I really thank you, Raven. I appreciate you too, babe. So happy you subscribe. And I can't wait to give y'all this information. Y'all have a good night. And stay safe out there in the bad weather.